Praise the Lord, children of God. How are you? I believe the Lord has been good to you. He's kept you well. My name is John Nathan Owara, commonly called Uncle John. I'm here to share with you the Word of God. Today, as I am always used to, I use acronyms or abbreviations to try and pass on information. Today, we won't talk about grace. G-R-A-C-E, grace. What is grace? What is it? How do we define it? How can a simple person understand grace? So that's why I chose to use the acronym or the abbreviation G-R-A-C-E. Let's define grace from a normal dictionary, from a usual dictionary. Grace is undeserved favor. Grace is a privilege to belong. A best payment for a worst sin or for something bad that you have done. This is grace. Of a worst action, when you get payment for an action, a bad action that you have done, that is called grace. That someone stands in your place to take payment for something bad that you have done. That is called grace. Briefly, that is grace, undeserved favor. So what is grace? We shall use G-R-A-C-E, like I said earlier on. G, grace is godly. That's very foundational. And it's important for us to know that grace is godly. Grace is of God. It is from God. Grace is founded and has its pillars on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Without Jesus, there is no grace. Without Jesus, there is no undeserved favor. So if you are being taught about grace, the first thing you need to know is that grace is of God. It has its roots. It has its hinges. It has its walls. It has its pillars on Jesus Christ. From the foundation all the way up, it's on Jesus. That is very important. If we read John chapter 3, verse 16, the common scripture that many people quote, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So it is of God. God gives. It is God that gives. And he gives to those that don't deserve. This is grace. So from John chapter 3, verse 16, we find that God loved a world a world so full of evil and sin that he gave his only best. So grace is of God. And if grace is of God, grace gives the best. Why? Because God gave Jesus as his best. We also realize that gr uh, grace is a spiritual aspect. It's a spiritual thing. It is spiritual. And therefore, it can only be explained and understood spiritually. When I talk about spirituality, I mean the spiritual part which comes from God. I'm not meaning the one from the devil. I mean from God. That is grace. It can only be understood spiritually. It can only be understood, it can only be understood from God's perspective. Human theology cannot explain grace because many of us have done things that Humanly speaking, we don't deserve to be alive. You and I don't deserve to be alive. We have lied. We have stolen. We have fornicated. We have committed adultery. We have done crazy things. Those things, if they were to heap it on me or you, you don't deserve to be alive. But such cannot be explained by human understanding. It cannot be explained by God. That is what grace is about. It's unexplainable by human understanding. That is grace. It is godly. If we go to R, grace is responsibility. Grace is not carelessness or freedom to do anything you feel like doing. No. We don't take the favor, the opportunity to be alive, 
to do anything that I want to do. We don't do that. Grace is responsibility. So you take the opportunity God has given you to be alive, even when you have done what is bad, even when you have cheated, even when you have stolen, and then you be responsible and say, God, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. I will do what is right. I will take responsibility. You don't go and use that freedom badly. So R is for responsibility. A, grace gives ability. Grace gives us ability. If we read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, this is what it says. It says that God, the power of God, has given us ability to create wealth. So if you have the grace of God upon your life, then that means you are supposed to be able to create wealth. You cannot be poor. It's not right. Because the grace of God gives you ability to earn, to work hard. That's grace. That is grace. Ability to go to work. Ability to drive if you're a driver. Ability to sweep if you're a sweeper. Ability to write reports. Ability to do whatever has been given unto you. That is grace. So use the grace well. And that is what we call ability. So go and create whatever God has given you ability to create. See, grace is character. You cannot behave like, I, I, I don't know what example to give, but you cannot create, the, you cannot behave the way you want to behave. Character is of God. Character is of God. So grace is character. God's grace develops godly character. And that is godly behavior. So God's grace, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, we are supposed to behave God's way. 3 John chapter 1, verse 11 tells us the same thing. We are supposed to create to behave God's way because God's grace develops godly character. How are you behaving? How are you behaving? Are you behaving like everybody else? God's grace gives you the ability to develop godly character, godly behavior. Do you respect people? Do you love? If we talk about God's character, God is love. God loves. Do you love? Do you forgive? This is what grace enables you to do. Grace enables you to develop godly character. If it was you, who is supposed to forgive? Someone who has done so bad to you, would you? But God did. He showed us the way to go. And that's why we must forgive. We must continue developing godly character. That is grace. And lastly, grace is eternal. Grace is not for today only or for tomorrow only or for last week. Grace is eternal. God's grace is in abundance. God's grace is for generations. God's grace is forever. God's grace is from children. God's grace is for adults. God's grace is for thieves. God's grace is for sinners. God's grace is for tall people. God's grace is for short people. God's grace is eternal. It's for everybody. It's for now. It's for tomorrow. It's for next week. It's for next month. It's for years to come. God's grace, once received, it's never taken away. It's important for us to understand grace. That grace is eternal. That's important. So grace is undeserved favor. Grace is a privilege to belong. Grace is the best payment for the worst action that someone has done. Grace is godly for G. 
Grace is responsibility for R. Grace is ability. Grace is character. And grace is eternal. May this speak to your heart. And may God continue ministering to you as you keep digging deep to understand more of God's grace. God bless you.